Aries, hi, welcome to my channel. Ooh, the moon jumping very, 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 very high, uh, which is interesting because the full moon's happening in your sign on um, Thursday the 17th. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a different reading. We're going to do the rest of the year. So we're going to do a nine card spread. We'll call it October, November, December. I know we're halfway through October already, but we'll class that as past. So November, December, we'll do positives as well as your uh, potential uh, negatives as well as your advised next steps. You can watch this for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your first house, this could be for you. Um, there will be an extended. Thank you for all the support. Cross watchers, you're more than welcome. All the information is in the description box. Let's dive in. So the Moon bringing some sort of illusion, some mystery. Interesting. Okay. So, October or the past. Okay, so it could have been a difficult month, a very difficult month, yeah, in whatever format this is. Uh, quite painful. Um, or maybe just a lot of things shifting. November. November brings a secret admirer to the surface. Maybe that's what the moon was about. And the December energy. Okay. Okay, we have the Six of Cups. The Page of Swords, the Seven of Wands, the Ace of Swords, Nine of Cups, Five of Cups to Three of Cups. It feels like whatever disappointment, either the recent past or whatever disappointment October has brought, there's a significant shift. Something hits it. It's like it's like being rejected for something, and all of a sudden, by the time we get to um, to December, you're pursued. You know. The other one that was being rejected is now the one that's been, um, you know, wanting um, the attention of. Um, it's like something's flipping the script here. That justice, justice is your first card out, which is the current south node, and also your opposite sign. It's your seventh house. It's your relationship house. Um, so there's a lot of dynamics at play at the moment for you guys. You know, not only is the south node in 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 Libra, not only do we have the solar eclipse in in Libra. Uh, the beginning of the month, the moon's going to be in your first house. There's a lot of energy at play, and it's cut, it's bringing the three of swords in the tower. So there could have been a difficult few weeks for some of you. A difficult three weeks with this um, uh, three of swords energy, but it's like whatever it is is a good thing because the tower is in my path of the potential positives. Current energy, oh, um, November energy. We've got the nine of wands the Knight of Wands and the High Priestess. Now the Knight of Wands and the High Priestess does indicate some sort of maybe secret admirer. And if it's not gonna be a secret admirer, if this is work related, this is somebody that's, you know, got their eye on you in some format. The Knight of Wands for me is something that's hit somebody out of the blue. In a different deck, launched in the seven, travels in the eight, hits its mark in the ninth. It's also the High Priestess meets Temperance. It's the moon in Sagittarius. And with the High Priestess being here, it's putting an emphasis on, in particular, Sagittarius season when we're in November. So maybe after the 21st, 22nd, give or take, I can't remember the days, um, something shifts, 22nd. Um, and there's, there's, there's like a realisation, something comes to the surface. We will look for the temperance card in a second to, uh, to establish what that is. And the future energy or the December energy is the Page of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords and the Page of Cups. Now, it just feels like from being disappointed and rejected in some format, everything shifts and then you're the, the attention's on you. It's like, you know, the Knight of Swords is somebody coming in quickly. It's like the, the runner becomes the chaser type of thing. So whatever has been disappointing we'll look we're going to look for saturn as well because saturn's in your 12th house and um, we've got saturn in libra here which is the world meets justice with the three of swords but whatever it is whatever this tower justice aspect is is actually a really good thing um 
It's a blessing. It's sage. Bear with me. Sage. Blessing, purification, invocation, sacred gift, spiritual cleansing, reassembling, emotional body, mystical sight. Okay. Ah, that's why the moon was jumping. Like herbs ruled by the moon, sage is a vibrational, powerful plant that deeply influences the electromagnetic field. The moon houses our intuition and, in and emotions, and lunar herbs greatly affect the tides of our subconscious mind, our emotions and psyche. Herbs of the moon also rule the gut, and sage is one of the allies that not only sharpens the gut, uh, our gut feelings and intuitive gateways, it also heals the gastrointestinal tract. Sage, in the like the moon in the tarot, is the great portal to the river of life. The silver light of sage grants us the power of insight while we navigate the darkest hours. The lunar powers of sage remind us to look inward to receive visionary insight from spirit. Don't get overly consumed by the emotional interplay. Allow it to pass like the clouds. Draw upon the inner reserves of your psyche to navigate darkness and become keenly aware of what is causing inner disturbances, fear and unhappiness. The initiation you are undergoing, although unfamiliar, is a great blessing. Feel yourself cease and reassemble as you break illusions to unearth hidden truths. Surrender, don't stand in your own way and allow the silvery white light of sage to shatter illusions as you grow, undergo a great awakening. So, that feels like what's going on here. October could be pretty difficult, like a great awakening for you, others, whatever it is. But in turn, what happens then is whatever's launched or whatever's been launched hits its mark in, in I'm going to say Sagittarius season it doesn't have to be um, and then it just the, the whole game flips it's like you know like I said the runner becomes the chaser the um, what was rejected is now offered to you interesting so what do I want to see the world temperance Yeah, look at that. We've got the Five of Cups to the Three of Cups. It's like disappointment, then all of a sudden the Three of Cups is celebration. Yeah, and the Nine of Cups the other side of that. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a sig significant shift that's taking place. The world is with the Six of Wands and the Knight of Cups. Saturn is turning this around. Whatever this is, there's a closing out of a cycle. You're breaking through whatever the Tower of Justice represents. Um, and your rewards come from it. Devil and the Ten of Swords, you're putting an end to the devil. Temperance is with the Five of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles. It, it's, it's like lack to abundance, you know, rags, uh, rags to riches. There's some, there's a, this is a dramatic turn of a round of events here. This is something that just shifts. Call it divine intervention, justice in the tower. Whatever's taking place here, uh, we've got the lovers and the sun at the end, which is fantastic. Whatever's taking place here is going to... All eyes on you. We've got one, two knights and two pages all seem to be focused on your energy at the moment. Whatever's taking place, something has hit its mark. Let's check out the uh, seven and the eight of wands because that tends to be the launch. Seven of wands is with the page of swords and the ace of swords. So something that was just watching is now taking action. Like I say, this could be a secret admirer of some kind with the knight of wands and the high priestess. Where's the eight of wands? Hopefully I'll be a little bit quicker this time. There's a difficult cards, these. I'm not used to them. They're uh, quite a unique deck. Called Spheres of Heaven Tarot, for those interested. So 
So the Eight of Wands is with the Ten of Cups and the Seven of Pentacles. You've waited a long time for this. You've, it's been traveling in the air for quite some time, but you, the Ten of Cups is here. Nice. So, um, a huge shift. Um, your energy that looks like it is now is no longer gonna look like that. Whatever's taking place, the, the script is flipping without question. Um, so rejection turns into acceptance, um, pain turns into power. And just the, this could be a, an awakening of psychic gifts as well. We've got the Tower of the High Priestess and the Page of Cups, which is interesting considering on Neptune in your 12th house, you're unearthing a lot of um, as, um, spiritual abilities. Okay. So do not fret if life feels difficult right now. It will end and end pretty quickly. Um, there's a significant shift. Like I say, it feels like a secret admirer of some kind. Like if it's not, if it's not anything sort of romantic or anything like that, it's somebody that's watching you that's um, not going to hide any longer. They're going to come out and offer you whatever it is that this is uh, uh, pertaining to be. Wonderful. So, trust Sage in the recent past or the October energy. Whatever's taking place is a blessing. Um, things are in motion. Things are hitting the mark, and December brings a completely turn, uh, to a different turn of events. Fantastic. In your extended, should we check out what this secret mirror aspect is? We'll um, we'll take its energy, what we know, what we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. We have Libra, Saturn in Libra, Aries and Scorpio, Moon in Sagittarius, Cancer, Pisces. Sun in Scorpio, Mars in Leo, Jupiter in Pisces, Mars in Scorpio, Mercury in Cancer, Capricorn, Jupiter in Leo, Capricorn, Sun in Gemini, Taurus. We have swords, we have wands, we have pentacles, we have cups. Everyone's here. Those are your standouts. Let me know. Take care. See you soon. Bye.